Hello everyone, and this is Carrie from Your Level Best. And today we're going to go ahead and talk about adding stuff to a recipe. Now if you like the videos that we're doing on our channel, please hit the subscribe button. So now I'm talking a little bit more about how to build your recipes to be more nutritionally sound. Um, today I'm going to start with protein, but I'm going to do several different types of videos that are going to talk about the different things you can add to a recipe in order to boost the nutrition. So one of the things you probably have around the house are recipe books. Or even on our computers we have internet recipes that we've saved. And they're great recipes, there's nothing wrong with them. However, when you look at the stats, depending on how old the recipe is, it may actually have calories and information about it, or not. And you may look at it and say, man, that doesn't have what I need to fulfill the macros in my diet. So, one of the things we're going to do today is talk about adding protein. Now, everybody needs protein in their diet. Um, one of the things that I think people don't do is eat enough protein. We need protein to build lead muscles. Now, adding protein to your diet is not the same as you probably have that stereotype in your head where you have this big burly muscle guy that um, is chugging a protein shake. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually adding good lead proteins to your diet um, to boost a recipe. Because a recipe may be good on its own but not have enough protein that you need to build lean muscle. Now, how much do you need? On our blog post, I actually talk about the exact amount, how much you need. I'm actually 126 pounds, and I do one gram of protein per pound. So I actually do 126 grams of protein per day. But I also work out five days a week, and I take active rest days, which, which means I'm actually walking um, on my rest days as well. So I'm a pretty active person, so I'm eating more protein because I'm working on building lean muscle. You may need more or less depending on your activity level. Now if you're older, you definitely want to eat more protein because when you get over 40 and, and further down the line, you're going to lose more and more of your lean muscle mass. So you need to add protein to your diet in order to add lean muscle to your diet. Or lean muscle to your body, I should say. So what I'm going to show you today is how I add protein to a recipe. So the way I actually adjust a recipe is I use one of the online calorie counting uh, pieces of software. I shouldn't say software, it's actually um, an internet program or an internet app or something on your phone. There are lots of them out there, but what they allow you to do is not only count the calories of what you're eating in a day, but it also allows you to add recipes. And the one I use, I add the ingredients from the recipe that I want as well as the amount of servings, and I can actually play with those uh, pieces in order to ensure that I'm getting the right amount of protein per serving. I actually go for about 20 grams of protein or more per serving because I want to make sure that I meet my protein needs for the day. Yours may be a little different. And here's how I actually get that amount of protein in a recipe. What I have in front of me here, I have several different types of proteins. I have non-vegetarian, vegetarian, and I also have in front of me a little protein powder. So those are the different types of things that I actually add to a recipe. Now I have more information on how many grams of protein are th there are per serving for each of these things on our blog post. So you should see, should see a link to that down below. So first I'm gonna actually talk about meat. Meat is actually one of the best ways to get protein in your diet. If you eat meat, you're in luck. This type of protein will actually raise the amount of grams of protein per serving pretty quickly. But it also has a lot of calories, so depending on which ones that you use, um, depends. that will depend on how many calories you're adding to your overall recipe. Um, you want to stick with lean cuts of meat. Right now I have in front of me here, I have some chicken breast. This is actually a good protein. It's lower in calories, lower in fat. Um, it's a lean protein, um, easy to add to your diet. And if you cook it right, because I know a lot of people don't like 
chicken breast because it can be dry. Um, there, is, there are ways to cook this so it's not dry at all. You just have to make sure that you only cook it till it's just done. Then we have here pork. I usually use pork tenderloin. This um, is actually a pork loin chop, but I use pork tenderloin the most. Um, it is the, a more expensive cut of meat, but if you actually go to your restaurant supply store, a lot of times they have meats on wholesale, so you can actually get it a little less expensive. But pork is another good one. Obviously, if you're kosher, this won't work for you, but pork is another lean protein that you can add to a recipe. I also have here some beef. Now, beef actually is one of the higher calorie add-ins. Even though there's lots of lean beef cuts, um, on the blog post I talk about using flank steak, but you can still use beef, just have to keep in mind that it does add more calories than a lot of other types of protein, but it's low sodium. I also have here ground turkey, so if you want to actually use um, ground meats, I actually suggest ground turkey or ground chicken because they're actually lower in calories and you still want to have some fat in there, but they're lower in calories um, and it'll give that ground beef type texture and taste to the recipe. And then finally, I also have here a can of tuna. Tuna is another great thing. It's actually very low in calories, but it's also very high in protein. I have in the blog post exactly the amount of grams of protein per serving, but it's a great thing. Actually, any seafood is a great um, idea to add to your dish for protein. Now, one thing I want to tell you about adding protein to a particular dish in terms of meat. Some meats, namely chicken, pork, and tuna, can add salt to your dish. So if you're on a low sodium diet, you want to make sure that you're only adding enough of these types of proteins to get the protein level you need, but not overload the salt. Um, pork and um, chicken, a lot of times if you buy it at the grocery store, will have a sodium solution added to it. Um, if you, you're gonna have to look around to see if you can find ways of getting it without. Same with um, fish. A lot of fish, especially if it's ocean fish, does have some level of sodium in it. So just make sure that when you're looking at how much protein to add to your recipe, that you're also looking at the sodium if you're doing a low sodium diet. Now, if you don't want to add meat, or you can't add, add any more meat, let's say your sodium level is, is topped out of the dish, but you don't have enough protein, there's a couple of other options. These are the vegetarian options. Now, they don't do as well as meat, I, I will admit that. But if you're a vegetarian, vegan, or you've just added so much meat and the, the sodium's too high and you need to add something that doesn't have as much sodium in it but still has a lot of protein, the vegetarian options are great. Um, I have here a couple of options. Again, the grams per serving of protein is on the blog post, but you can add tofu. Tofu is great if you're doing an Asian dish or a similar dish where tofu is usually a main ingredient, um, but I think it works well in other types of dishes. I've used tofu in Mexican. I've used tofu to substitute or even add to. It depends on if, if that texture will work for the particular recipe you're working with. Then there's also tempeh. It's another soy product. It's got a lot more chew. It's a fermented soy product um, that adds a higher level of protein and it also adds a little bit of meatiness to the dish. It's very tasty, um, but it may be acquired, an acquired taste if you're not into fermented food. Then there are also beans. I have here some canned beans. Um, if you're watching your sodium, make sure that you either A, soak your beans overnight, just get a bag of uh, dry beans and soak them overnight. That way you're not adding any sodium to the dish. Or I actually use a specific brand from my store that has very low sodium. Um, so if you want to use canned beans, make sure to look at the sodium level because sometimes that sodium level can be pretty high. But I have your kidney beans and black beans as a couple of examples of beans that you can use. But there's pinto beans, there's beans of all different types that you can use but are great for adding protein to a dish. Then I have here a couple of frozen bags of vegetables. And you may be surprised that there, there's actually some vegetables that add protein, and namely they're beans. Here I have green beans, which are, are lower in the protein grams. However, they do add some level of protein to a dish, 
But green peas are actually a very interesting way of getting protein. When I have to add protein to a dish, a lot of times I add green peas because they're low in sodium, they're high in nutrients and fiber, and they can really boost the protein level of a dish. And for vegetarians, that's something very important. And a lot of makers that do a vegetarian or vegan uh, style of protein powder actually use green peas um, because it is such a high level of protein. So here are some of the normal ways, things that you probably have thought of or may not have thought of to add protein to your diet, either non-vegetarian or vegetarian. But one thing I want to address here is what I have in front of me is a, I have a dish here of protein powder. Now, a lot of folks may look at that and say, okay, protein powder, A, it's expensive, and B, that's just for shakes. And that's not true. Protein powder is a very good way of adding protein to certain types of dishes because it's a powder. It's easy to add. Um, it also doesn't have to be made into a shake because I think a lot of times people look at protein powder and think again of the burly muscle guy that you know he's drinking his protein powder. I'll, I'll admit to you, I do not drink shakes. I hate them. They don't do anything for me and I'm hungry after I've had the shake. So I actually use protein powder and yogurt. Tony and I both do this. We put our protein powder in our yogurt and it boosts the protein amount in the yogurt. It tastes good um, and it makes for a heartier dish. So you can actually use flavored protein powder, unflavored protein powder, it doesn't matter. Um, you can use it any way you need to. But a couple of things, just look on the blog post. I did talk about how you can save some money because yes, protein powder can be expensive, especially if you use it every day. But there are ways of actually saving money so that you're not spending an arm and a leg on protein powder because you know a two pound thing, depending on your brand, can actually be 50 bucks, which if you don't have a lot of money, that's, that's a lot of money to spend. So I would recommend taking a look at the blog post exactly how I save money on protein powder. So you don't necessarily have to use protein powder, but I did want to mention it because it's something that's an option. There are always options with adding protein. So as you can see here, there are lots of options. Go with what you like and then add them to your dish. And so here are some ways to add protein to a recipe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know um, other videos you'd like to do. And see you next time. We'll have another recipe video coming up soon. Thanks so much.